Hi everyone, welcome to World's official YouTube channel. So on today's video, we are going to have a discussion on Ethereum and I will simplify this topic, especially if you are getting started in cryptocurrencies. We will speak about three specific points that one, what Ethereum is and how is it different from Bitcoin exactly? Second, what is the functionality utility of Ethereum and why is it that people are so bullish about Ethereum? Third and finally, I will answer some of the most frequently asked questions about Ethereum. So let's get the video started and also a humble request that if you like the content of this channel, please like and subscribe. It would mean a lot to us. So first and foremost, let us discuss what exactly is Ethereum and what are the similarities between Ethereum and Bitcoin. So both Ethereum and Bitcoin are blockchain networks. More specifically, they are layer one protocols. So layer one protocol from a simplified understanding perspective can be considered as a basic building blockchain network on which other functionalities of layer two, layer three protocols are built. So both Ethereum and Bitcoin are basic building blocks in the cryptocurrency network. Now this also means that both Ethereum and and Bitcoin have their own native cryptocurrencies. So in Bitcoin's case, the name of the blockchain network is Bitcoin and the name of the cryptocurrency also is Bitcoin. In Ethereum's case, Ethereum is the network and Ether is the coin that you end up using. Now, both these blockchain networks are decentralized to a very large extent. In case of Bitcoin, it is considered to be 100% decentralized. You can understand this decentralization aspect of Bitcoin by looking at its tokenization. So for example, you might know that Bitcoin has a limited supply of number of Bitcoins. So there are only 21 million Bitcoins that can be released onto the Bitcoin network. And after that, the supply of Bitcoin will be exhausted. Now that piece of information is immutable, it cannot be changed, it is just fixed and that supply of Bitcoin will remain constant. No one can make a unilateral decision of increasing or decreasing the supply of Bitcoin. On the flip side, Ethereum is also a decentralized network. There are several attributes. I'm just talking about tokenization, which is one of the attributes. The tokenization of Ethereum is that it does not have a fixed supply per se. We are not saying that, hey, Ethereum is only going to have 21 million Ethereum or 42 million Ethereum. There is no specific limit that has been set. So Ethereum is both inflationary and deflationary, but Bitcoin has a capped supply. So to cut the long story short, Bitcoin is highly decentralized. On the flip side, Ethereum is not as decentralized as Bitcoin. Now, finally comes the concept of verification protocol. Verification protocol simply means that you're using the Bitcoin network and you're using the Ethereum network, but whatever data that is being put on these networks, how would you verify it? What mechanism will you use? So you must have heard of things like proof of work or proof of stake. I'll make a separate video on that topic. But right now, Ethereum is also based on proof of work and Bitcoin is also based on proof of a consensus mechanism. In simple words, it simply means that there is a mechanism that is in place as to how the data on Bitcoin or Ethereum blockchain network is going to be put and verified on that network. So both Ethereum and Bitcoin are based on this consensus mechanism. You might ask that, okay, what other consensus mechanisms are there? So for example, we have proof of stake consensus mechanism on which other blockchain networks like Solana or Cardano are based. Also an interesting fact is that Ethereum this year is going to migrate from proof of work consensus mechanism to proof of stake consensus mechanism. Now there are three major differences between Ethereum and Bitcoin, which is very important for us to understand. So first and foremost, we need to understand the reason of development for Ethereum and Bitcoin. So Bitcoin has been developed as a hedge against inflation. You might have seen that a lot of governments print a lot of currency every year due to which the value of cash that you're holding, it keeps on going down, which means that currencies are inflationary in nature. A classic case in point is from 2008 onwards when the US government printed a lot of money. That concept in economics is called as quantitative easing and they continued to print a lot of money even during the 2020 COVID crisis. So every time the government turns on a printer, the value of the cash, be it US dollar, Singapore dollar, INR, it keeps on going down in value. Now Bitcoin on the other hand has a limited supply of Bitcoins. It has only 21 million Bitcoins that will be released as per a pre-decided protocol. So investors feel a little bit more comfortable in taking positions in Bitcoin and they primarily do it because they consider Bitcoin to be a deflationary currency, not an inflationary currency like USD or INR. Now the reason for development of Ethereum is very, very different. Ethereum is being developed due to the utility that it offers. You might have often heard that we are having something called as smart contracts. Entire NFT economy is getting powered up. Where is it all coming from? It is coming from the development that is undertaking on the Ethereum blockchain network. 
so the entire defi space entire smart contract technology entire decentralized application space it is being powered up through ethereum so a great way to think about the major difference between bitcoin and ethereum is to use the analogy that the winklevoss brothers have given us they have said that bitcoin can be considered as digital gold because it has finite supply and ethereum can be considered as digital oil very similar to how oil has a bunch of different uses similarly ethereum is powering up the entire crypto blockchain space due to its utility feature now other very quick differences would be that the consensus mechanism as i said earlier for bitcoin is proof of work primarily it also means that in order to process one block of data of bitcoin it takes approximately 10 minutes but on ethereum right now it is a much faster system and there one block of data can be roughly processed in 10 seconds of course with time even faster networks have come into existence about which we will speak on subsequent videos but the speed of transaction of ethereum is much faster compared to bitcoin and therefore it can support lot more applications per se now interestingly despite having very high speed ethereum is still facing a lot of congestion because a lot of applications are now being developed on the ethereum blockchain and as a result ethereum is now migrating to a protocol called as proof of stake now the third and the final aspect about which i have touched upon earlier but i will still recap it is the supply or the decentralization feature that bitcoin is highly decentralized especially around its tokenomics but ethereum is not ethereum tokenomics is both inflationary or deflationary in nature is that something that investors should be scared about when it comes to ethereum that hey it's not completely decentralized and people who are running the ethereum network they can also decide to print a lot of ethereum so to say so should we be scared the answer is no because the objective of ethereum is to add utility is to build applications that improves our life so to power up that developer ecosystem ethereum needs to give a lot of incentive for developers to come on board users to start using different applications so therefore the tokenomics needs to be little bit more liberal there now let's very quickly talk about the utility of ethereum there are three specific utilities that i would like to point out of course there are many more but these three are the most important ones first and foremost ethereum is powering up something called as smart contracts these are essentially pieces of code that run on itself and it can't be changed if you have to make modifications to a smart contract it can't be done you have to scratch the entire smart contract and create an entirely new one so in short smart contracts are immutable again if there is enough interest i will make a separate video on smart smart contracts but this entire smart contracts game or smart contracts technology so to say is powering up a lot of industries for example smart contracts will find applications in how medical records are kept it also powers up litigation imagine this if that someone violates a contract then what is the recourse that you have that you have to go file an official complaint then there will be some kind of arbitration around it and then you might get your dues but on a smart contract these kind of problems go away because these are self executing in nature once the code has been prepared and it has been put on a blockchain network it will function like a computer program if certain conditions are met then results will be generated so given the utility of the smart contracts it is being said that smart contracts will find application across every single industry that is out there Now smart contracts are powering up something called as dapps these are decentralized applications centralized applications will be applications like amazon these are somewhat controlled by jeff bezos and people from amazon that is a centralized structure that someone is overlooking that structure but decentralized applications are essentially smart contracts that have been pieced together and they run on their own a classic case would be something like aave or compound which powers up something called as the defi economy now defi economy in very easy to understand understand way means that these are new age banks they allow you to lend they allow you to borrow they do peer to peer financing as well so all these things that a bank can do in normal circumstances these can also be done by pieces of computer codes that are running and those computer codes are building an industry called as defi you would say that okay so this looks very flimsy why is it that these major banks should be scared of them they are already scared and a lot of banks for example jp morgan chase is trying to build its defi based applications also now the other utility of ethereum is that it is also powering up the metaverse or the gaming ecosystem on the blockchain network a classic case in point will be something like decentraland which is one of the foremost metaverses that is getting built consider metaverse to be a new planet that is being created it has its own set of rules own set of functions for example you might have heard that meta erstwhile facebook is also getting into 
that metaverse space. So what are they trying to create? They are trying to create a metaverse, a new planet that will facilitate social interactions. Similarly, new planets are being built which are facilitating gaming interactions. So that is what the functionality of metaverse is. Again, a layer or a protocol that is allowing us to build these metaverses is Ethereum. It is also to be noted that certain other blockchain networks are also powering up the metaverses. For example, Solana is one such blockchain network about which I will speak on further videos. Now, third and finally, the entire creator economy is getting a boost through something called as NFTs or non-fungible tokens. For example, a classic case in point is Board Ape Yacht Club. So they look something like this. And these are artworks that are getting sold for millions. You might ask, okay, why is that? Because this just looks like a very funny picture. Why are people paying millions of dollars to avail such artwork? It's not about just the artwork aspect of it, but the social currency or social component of it. If you own Jack Dorsey's first tweet, that gives you social bragging rights. Now, again, this is a complex topic that will necessitate a video on its own, but we need to understand for the time being that NFTs are being powered through Ethereum. Third and final utility of Ethereum is that it is actually creating a developer ecosystem. For example, you might have heard that there are programming languages like C, C++, Java, .NET. All these are programming languages around which a developer ecosystem or community has been built. Similarly, we have Ethereum around which a very big developer community and ecosystem has been built that is developing new age applications that is solving a lot of issues for us. So of course, Ethereum is a very wide topic to cover and I would not be able to cover all the functionalities on this video, but I hope that this gave you a sense of what Ethereum is. Now come some FAQs around Ethereum. First and foremost, why is it that Ethereum cannot replace something like Bitcoin? because it is not even trying to replace Bitcoin. Bitcoin has got prominence because one of the key issues that it solves is to act as a hedge against inflation and a hedge against excess currency printing. So that is the functional value add of Bitcoin. Ethereum protocol is being developed for completely different purposes, which is to facilitate more utility and create more decentralized applications that will find utility across a bunch of different industries. Some cases would be metaverses, some cases would be NFTs, some cases would be DeFi protocols. So development of these ecosystem is what Ethereum is after. Which brings us to the second question that is Ethereum perfect? The answer is no. There are a lot of issues with Ethereum. One primary being that Ethereum's usage grew so fast that so many developers started developing applications on Ethereum that the network started facing congestion issues. For example, you might have noticed that many a time when you try to withdraw Ethereum to your own hardware wallet or if you go and try to buy an NFT through Ethereum on an Ethereum mainnet, you would be charged very high commission. For example, in order to transfer $1, you would have to pay a gas fee of Ethereum which is worth $25. So that is the major issue that Ethereum is currently facing. Does it mean that the Ethereum will go away? The answer is no. And I will explain this topic more in detail on the next video when I talk about Polygon Matic. So in summary, Ethereum is a wonderful protocol. It does have its own set of limitations, no doubt about that. It is also trying to solve its own internal issues, but for the time being, it is leading the race in terms of creating this developer ecosystem and adding more functionalities into the mix, which is overall increasing the adoption of cryptocurrencies across the globe. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please press the like button and I will see you the next time.